Is we live? Is we live? Is we live? Yes, yes, you're now tuned into the Rare Podcast. And of course, I'm your host of the most, NK, aka the Man of the Hour, too sweet to be sour. But of course, I'm not alone. I'm joined with a very, very special guest, someone who I've wanted to get on the show for a long time, but we've made it happen. Bro, introduce yourself. Tell the people what you're about. Sure, sure. Thank you for having me on. No, my pleasure. As always, pleasure. man. A big, big, big pleasure. Um, not pleasure. <laughs> 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 I start with a big time. It's, 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 it's a pleasure. Nah, it's a pleasure love. to be on here. Uh, my name is Manny. Um, mostly do post credit uh, post credit scene podcast. A fourteen HQ, fourteen HQ original. Uh, mostly talk about film, TV, um, and that sort of content. We, like we love playing quite a few games. I think that's like that's my bag. Like just playing games. Yeah, uh, playing games, doing quizzes. Um, that's something that we often do. If you uh, if you want to check out our content on TikTok, Instagram, even on YouTube. But yeah, man, we're all lovers of of film and TV and me personally i'm still a lover of stories of, mm. of writing so um i enjoy like consuming any sort of story from film tv manga anime music books uh any form of stories is it's just what what i enjoy and what, mm. what i live for to be fair uh but yeah man manny that's 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 me yeah man i appreciate <laughs> you know man honestly check out post credit scene podcast like one of like my favorite podcasts i've discovered like, the, the, in the um in recent memories like like i said the games are hilarious the guest the imposter game is yeah. it's absolutely hilarious oh, if you see how <laughs> heated it actually gets sometimes like i, I think I, I can't remember if it was in the cut but we done one for um so what the question was the best um sports film that you watched but obviously the imposter got asked this best basketball film yeah and guys put rocky had his his one in it i was like bro like there's no way rocky is your favorite sports film like i've never seen you talk about it yeah i was like, like you don't know me at all and obviously he wasn't in spot in it i was like oh yeah like it just yeah. it just it might just, be lying yeah 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 like i've been on that i've i've, I've been on that and capped i've, I've lied i enjoy it i enjoy it yeah no, do you know what games. when i was on the show i think we had to like put our like top five um at like, tv shows yeah we, we, we knew you weren't back to back yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. and then you named someone i was like damn why didn't i name that one what was that one about for netflix specifically right no i don't think it was for netflix just like tv in general because you named game of thrones and i was like why didn't i think of game of thrones was it you or me that named bojack horseman i think i named bojack and I think I was fuming because I think Roger Holmes and I think I was holding Roger Holmes towards the end. It's like he's not gonna put put in his top five, and he did. And yeah, I remember I was fuming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Roger Holmes is got it. Listen, yeah, Roger yeah. Holmes like I think. It's a show like I find it. Do you find it hard to recommend Bojack Horseman to people? Because when I uh, when people ask me, oh, why should I watch it? Because when it comes to like um, animation, yeah. comedy animation, people think of the Family Guys, the, yeah. the South Parks, and it, it it does. It is a comedy at the end of the day. Yeah, but it's so much deeper than that. It's not an episodic story. It's a serialized yeah. story, and like the themes of the show are quite heavy yeah. in comparison to those shows. So when I recommend it to people, either people going in expecting your traditional adult comedy. Yeah. And they don't get that. So, like, how do you recommend Bojack Horseman to people? It's, it's so funny because I had a conversation with somebody yesterday, um, and he was talk we're talking about um, like Netflix um, animations that came out, and he was saying how yeah. Arcane and the new one that came out, Blue Blue Eyed um, Samurai, Blue Eyed Samurai, yeah. Blue Samurai, um, and something else. Castlevania is really Ca good. That's that's the other one he said. Castlevania. He's saying really that good. those were his top three um, animes um, or animated. TV shows that were not Japanese yeah. on Netflix. I was like, but Bojack Horseman for me is number one, isn't it? Yeah. And then I was trying to recommend it to him. And I don't know how to. Like, the best way I can describe is that it's a dark comedy. Yeah. That um and it, it can get like it can get really, really depressing as well. And the characters within it, like, they're very like honest and real. And flawed. If, if, if very flawed as human beings are. Yeah. Um, and I think the writing for it, like, is is it's really exceptional in terms of being able to create characters that can can fuck up. But you can also see the uh, very much the human side, mm -hmm. human side of them. This is not about Bojack specifically, by the way, because he's an awful human. No, being. he's an awful. Man. He's awful. But in general, like, characters in general, like um, none of them are perfect. They all have their own issues, and even like somebody like uh, Mr. Peanut Butter. If you haven't watched the show, he's uh, portrayed as this like really nice guy, um, but deep down, he's very selfish. Uh, he, lo he looks after himself more than he looks after other people at times and he's not does doesn't really do well communicating but they highlight stuff like that as well because i know people like that that you, yeah. can, you can be you can be a really nice person but you can also be very selfish uh, flawed, underneath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like human beings are flawed but yeah man bojack horseman is a great show i recommend it to anybody yeah for sure i think the thing the main takeaway i take from bojack, bojack horseman is that like 
your people are the way they are because of their past experiences. Yeah. And that trauma lives with you. But what I like about Bojack Horseman as well is that it gives us the origins of people's trauma, but it doesn't excuse the actions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. it gives you both sides of the spectrum where it's like these are three dimensional, complex characters who do have trauma, who do have reasons for being the people they are. By the end of the day, just because you have trauma, it's still your responsibility to deal with that. And especially yeah. with Bojack as a character, he's a character to where obviously because he's the protagonist of the story we sympathize with him yeah but it, it, it gets to a point where it's like like todd said you are all the things that's wrong with you yeah you have to do the work in order to improve as a human being yeah. because you can't keep making mistakes and making mistakes because at the end of the day your actions have effects on other people and i think it's a project horseman is just an amazing study of like the human condition yeah um so yeah it's a show i always i always recommend but um, before we get into like the main topics, we have we like to do a little segment called Rare Moment of the Week where we like sure. to spotlight a creative or somebody we feel deserves the accolades, deserves the attention. Sure. Manny, who is your Rare Moment of the Week? Um, so I have this podcaster slash journalist, and I apologise if I'm butchering your name, um, y Yolante, Yolante? Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry if I'm um, uh, pronouncing your name wrong. And she has a podcast called uh, The Black Pros Podcast. Mm. Um, essentially has like uh, black, I want to say black British writers in all forms from um, directors to um, authors um, to just a, a, a bunch of um, other, other type of writers that come, come on the show just to talk about the experiences, talk about uh, the writing process um, and also talking about like um, like what advice they will give and what inspires them so on and so forth. And I feel like one, she, she's very good at like getting the right answers out of people um, and she's really good at exploring people's creativity and i think the black pros is like a podcast that i've not necessarily come across mm -hmm. before especially not in the uk and and i love hearing about um writers i love hearing about creatives in in all in all forms and i think the black pros podcast is literally one of the best pro podcasts that i've listened to and i do recommend for, re recommend it to anybody that not only just wants to um, get a better understanding of, of the writing process within several different industry, but also to get a better understand, oh, also to support um, people within the writing industry and and hear what they have to say um, for anybody that wants to get in that sort of profession as well. Mm. But yeah, Black Pros Podcast uh, by Yolante, I, I highly highly recommend it. I think she's absolutely wavy as well. Amazing, amazing. I pre I I'll definitely I'll definitely check her out. Um, my rare moment of the week is a YouTuber content creator called Sage Arts. Um, I discovered him. Yeah, oh, I've, I've caught. I've, he's British, isn't it? Yeah, he's British. Yeah, and he does anime. Yeah, he and does like the anime yeah, manga yeah, reviews. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, do you know yeah. what it is? Like, I was even speaking to Manny about this in the podcast. It's like, uh, and before the podcast started, it's nice to see like people from the UK making content yeah. about like the mediums I'm interested in. Yeah, yeah especially yeah. the niche mediums like anime, manga, film, television. Because I feel like a lot of the times, as like black Brits, especially, like a lot of us watch anime, but a lot of us don't make content about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So to see another black Brit making content, I mean, he's like, for example, like he's watching Jujutsu Kaisen right now the same way I am. And I'm just like, every time I watch an episode, I go onto his video to see yeah. his perspective on things. And I really just like love the fact that um, we're seeing more black content creators like making niche content. Yeah. Because um, it, it, it gives it, not only like gives us content to watch, but I think it helps build community. Unity. Yeah. Like even us right now, like the fact that like I saw you on TikTok and then we've made like content together. Yeah. Like it's a beautiful thing in it. So like I always want to big up people like in the space just making um dope content. And I feel like he's making great, just like fun anime content. So yeah, big up Sage Arts. Yeah, man. big up Sage Arts, man. Yeah, yeah 100%. Big, big him up, man. But um that was our rare moment of the week. Next week we'll do another rare moment of the week. So thank you for tuning in. But Let's get into a quick game of this or that. Okay. Simple game. I give you two options. Sure. You pick this or that. Sure. All right. Quick fire. First answer that comes to your head. Yeah. No don't, thinking. Just, don't think just, about it too yeah, much. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Bond or John Wick? Bond. Pixar or DreamWorks? DreamWorks. 2D or 3D animation? 2D. Rum or vodka? Rum. Digimon or Pokemon? Digimon. Anime or manga? Manga. Sub or dub? Sub. The fact that you said Digimon of a Pokemon, <laughs> I had to spot you. Like, like, I had to spot you. Did, did you, like, the anime, um, anime cartoon, you know what, let's, let's go to anime. Anime. Because, yeah. It's better than Pokemon. I, I think, like, hands down better. And I haven't watched it in years. Like, big up Pokemon, especially when it comes to, like, 
the games, the card games, the video games, um, and all the other bunch of stuff they do, wavy. But but it, sorry, I can't compare the anime to to Digimon. I think Digimon is way better. Do you know what? I've been fighting this Digimon fight for decades yeah. now, yeah. Because I think when it comes to Pokemon, I say Pokemon, because I've watched about the two, I say Pokemon had probably better animation because it might have a better budget no, or better stuff. I disagree with that as well. Well, Digimon movie, but in terms of the Digimon anime, it depends. Yeah. Outside of the outside of the evolutions, yeah. they're not really doing much. But okay. in terms of characters world and world building yeah. and just overall plot, I think Digimon is clear. Yeah. Um, and I think I like the fact that the Pokemon are actually like the poke. I mean, not the Pokemon, the Digimon are actual characters. Yeah. Algumon's a character. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Gurumon's is, is an actual character that have relationships with these, yeah. with, um, with the Digi, um, with the Digi Destin. And just like, I'm so sorry that when it came to like that, um, evolutions of the Digimon, cool. Algumon into Greymon, Greymon into War Greymon, like Digimon for me. I always gravitated to it more because I was more interested in the world of Digimon yeah. than Pokemon. Pokemon is the bigger franchise for sure, but Digimon as an anime, whether it's Adventure 1, Adventure 2, Digimon yeah. Tamers, like I was a Digimon kid over a Pokemon kid. So the fact that you said Digimon, I was like, 100%. Yes. I, I wouldn't even go, I, and uh, this is not a slight to Pokemon. I think Pokemon is great. I would go as far as saying that Beyblade is better than Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're speaking gospel. You're speaking gospel. What Beyblade, V Force, and the G Revolution? Yeah, 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 yeah. Bey yeah. Listen, Beyblade, yeah, for me, yeah, that's that's the childhood anime. I still go back to the like. I still I understand. I haven't watched it in years, but I, I should go back I, to. It. I've gone back to like Beyblade, yeah, especially like the original like trilogy where it's like Tyson, Kai, Tyson, my guy, yeah, Tyson, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kai, Ray, the, the Max, <laughs> bro. Beyblade, yeah, like I feel like. I feel like Beyblade, I wouldn't say it's forgotten, but obviously Yu-Gi-Oh is going to continue with the card games. The card game is super popular. Yeah. Pokemon's obviously like still here, but I feel people forget how popular Beyblade, Beyblade was. was. Yeah, bro. Beyblade was a phenomenon. Did you did you have Beyblades? Yeah, yeah I had, of course. I, 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 had, I remember I had, I had Trigger. I, do, I, do, I, can't, I can't tell you the names. I can't remember that, that much of it, but I remember yeah. having Beyblades and, and having a good time with them as well, man. Listen, Beyblades, I, ha I had my Beyblades and then just like, just the feeling of like, three, two, two one, one, let, let it rip. rip. <laughs> like, Beyblades was an absolute phenomenon. Yeah, and, then when it came, and then when it came to the anime as well, just some of the, even some of the Beyblade battles, I was like, this is absolute gas yeah yeah so, so for me like when it comes to like anime of that period of time that like, i call them like the nostalgia anime mm. for me i have like beyblade number one Yu-Gi-Oh number two digimon three and then pokemon four okay that that's the way i rank them i think one to like beyblade digimon um and Yu-Gi-Oh. They, they can, can go they, up and up, but you can, know that Pokemon's fourth. Yeah, I know that Pokemon's yeah, fourth. Yeah. Unfortunately, it just well, wasn't. Facts. It just wasn't. It just wasn't like it didn't hit me the way Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh. Like Yu-Gi-Oh was different. And I, I think I think the difference is because Pokemon was a lot more episodic than the rest of them. Um, uh, if I remember correctly, Digimon had way more of a story than for sure. For, than than the po I think Digimon definitely had the best story out uh, the uh, the four in my opinion. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like uh, again, Pokemon is great. It's, it's it's amazing. It just it's not it's not levels. It's not levels. It's not. It, it, it just took off. I feel like Pokemon took off obviously because of like the, even the intro. The intro was amazing. <sighs> Ali, but the, the Pokemon cards, the games, it, like, as a franchise, as a like, franchise, it's, it's clear. It's one of the greatest franchises of all time. Ever, yeah. One I think it's one of. The, I think it's one of the most like. I think they did like a list. I think Forbes or one of these. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Maybe I think my, I think Mario. Might, I mean, no, I think Pokemon is the biggest like best selling franchise. Yeah, I think it's the best selling franchise. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, po yeah, Pokemon is just like it's 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 an it's a long endearing franchise, but just for me the the I just hold like Yu Gi Oh, Digimon, and yeah. Beyblade in just a much higher regard. Same. Um, so sticking on anime, obviously Attack on Titan. Yes, sir. Has just concluded. You read the manga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we can still talk about the ending. I know when I remember as an anime only for the most part. I remember when the manga ended. There was a lot of uproar. There was a <laughs> yeah, lot yeah, of yeah. controversy. Yeah. And as an anime only, I was like, how can the story mess it up from here? And then getting to the ending myself, I was like. I kind of hear the complaints, but I kind of think people are overreacting. What are your thoughts on the ending? One thing I'll say, there's, there's a huge difference between the manga and the anime. And Got then, you. They removed stuff from the manga 
and they added other stuff. They removed stuff from the manga ending and added other stuff from the anime mm. ending. So when the manga ended, it ended. But then the manga car um, added a new chapter to the end. Um, mm-hmm. So I think the chapter when we see um, like one of um, Evans, um, like not ancestors, double double way. Oh yeah, 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 like descendants. Descendants. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that wasn't in the okay, original manga. Okay, so when the that, descendant goes to, to yeah, find yeah, the tree, yeah. okay, that, that was that was an added another chapter afterwards mm. because because what I would say is because the ending was rushed and there was like quite a lot of you, quite a few things that he felt felt missing. Okay. So I felt like he made another chapter to add to it. There's the stuff that was especially in the interaction between Aaron and Armin. Armin. Again, I haven't watched the I've seen clips and I saw people talk about yeah, it. Yeah. There's stuff in that conversation that was removed completely. Okay. That a lot of people complained about. Um, so yeah, the anime um, ending is probably a lot better than the manga because of those adjustments. Yeah. Um, so speaking on the manga part, yeah. it's that one, I think Eren is the worst protagonist of any series of like. Really? And I don't think it's easily. I don't, okay. I, I don't even think it's close. Okay. I think Eren is the worst protagonist of any good or really good um anime or manga series because I, th- I still do think Attack on Titan is absolutely amazing generational and um, might not get something like that anytime soon um, the ending felt a bit rushed um, it felt like the uh, even the whole um, sorry why do, why do you feel that way about Eren I'm curious to know okay okay I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, like, yeah, 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 let me yeah. get my Eren hate on <laughs> okay let's go so even like so I didn't read the manga for like two years I took like a two year break um and 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 uh, Attack on Titan manga comes out like once a month, so it was like twenty, twenty seven chapters behind, didn't it? And this was just after the time skip uh, when I took a break. I remember all my friends and I've been complaining about Eren for ages. And like, two of my friends are like, "No, nah, keep reading. Like you're gonna see like there's, there's a switch up between Eren and it." I was like, "Ah, right, cool. Let me, I'll get done it." So what my issue with Eren was that one is a big crybaby, <laughs> big big crybaby, and two, he always needs to get rescued. All the time, he always needs to get saved. And the amount of plot armor they, that he has, I just dislike plot armor in general, especially to this degree. Like that's what really disliked Jon Snow's character in Games of Thrones. Mm. Um, towards the end, I feel like they gave him too much plot armor, and it was um, it, it didn't it didn't do the the story of Game of Thrones justice yeah. in terms of like you pay for the you pay for your mistakes. Yeah. And I feel like Aaron in, in Attack on Titan, he, he rarely ever paid for his mistakes. Yeah. He kept getting saved, but so on and so forth. He gets his time and powers. He still needs to get rescued. You're literally the most powerful person in your land, apart from um, Reyna. Yeah, apart from Reyna and Anna, you're essentially you're the most powerful person there because you have a t- you have a yeah. time powers. You're still useless. You're still get you're still getting wrapped up. You're still not able to catch any bodies like as as a normal human being because yeah. you're that useless. Yeah. Now fast forward to the time skip. Man has a little gl- glow up, and now he just turns into a school shooter. <laughs> Edge lord, <laughs> it turns into an edge lord. It's like you went from being a crybaby, always need to get rescued, to this edge lord that just wants to kill everything and anyone. And even in the time skip, at the beginning of the time skip, he needs to get rescued again. You have a, you have the titan powers. You just ate another titan, and he still needs to get rescued. That's why I dislike Eren. He just like he can't do things on his own. Yeah, he always needs help from other people. And then when he gets help from other people, it disregards them, disregards them as if like they didn't just yeah. save your life. So yeah, I really dislike Eren as okay. a character. I, th- I, th- I think I don't, I just don't. Like the fact that so many ca- like character can have this much plot, plot armor. So when you saw, obviously, probably reading the manga, and, you, and and you'd probably definitely saw this, like the the pro Eren like accounts, the pro Eren. Like I feel like Eren's like Eren propaganda yeah. really started like when when the time skip happened, when like the whole yeah. people declaring themselves as Jaegerists, which is yeah like, yeah yeah nuts. But like, so how did you feel like when you saw like wait why do people love because I, I thought a lot of people in the beginning probably shared your sentiment yeah people in that like, early attack on time before like we know about the Eldians and the marlins were probably saying like Eren isn't my favorite character i probably i saw a lot of like levi stands erwin yeah, stands yeah, yeah. erwin's my favorite character but oh, um, yeah. i love erwin but post like the time skip there was a lot of pro Eren out there like how did you feel about that because, because I took I took a break, so I wasn't yeah. um, involved in the discourse during during that time because I wasn't I wasn't reading the manga. Right? Um, but I could see again, like my one of my when the cell was gonna catch up, my friends were like, "Oh yeah, Aaron send a new leaf." Da, 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 da. And I, I remember I got to I caught up. I was like, "So where's this new leaf that you guys yeah. are talking about?" I was fuming, but I I kind of get it because in terms of um, because everybody likes technically an underdog story yeah. of him literally having nothing to now being able to, I guess, bully other people. 
I just think him as a person, character, it seems like a coward to me. Yeah. Um, so I kind of get why people suddenly had a switch and start loving Eric. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't work for me. It just doesn't work for me at all. Um, so yeah, like I, I just, just, as a protagonist, he's just like legit the worst one out of a good series that yeah. I, I've enjoyed. I think for me, when it comes to Eren, I find him incredibly fascinating. I don't necessarily love him, but mm. I find him incredibly fascinating. I think, okay, spoilers, spoilers. I don't know if I, did, I should I need to preface this, but we're talking about the ending. So guys, there will be spoilers, right? When it came to the whole rumbling, right? Yeah. There was a lot of discourse online about the ethics of it and yeah. whether he was justified. And for me, the ending perfectly captures who Eren is. Mm. Aaron is not smart. Mm -hmm. He's not someone with a lot of foresight. And this is the best plan he could come up with. Yeah. But I think the author, um, Isayama, is basically telling us that this wasn't the best plan. Yeah. Um, and I think people who are like, because I have I have a lot of friends who are like, no, nah, Aaron had no choice. He was backed into a corner. Mm. And my response is, Aaron chose the simplest route. Yeah. And he chose the only route that he knew. And Eren never grew. No. Eren never grew. Eren, when we first get introduced to Eren um, in the beginning of Attack on Titan, his motive is, I want to slaughter all Titans. Yeah. His motives never changed. The target changed. Yeah. It was now, I don't need to slaughter all Titans. I need to slaughter all enemies. Yeah. So Eren's response to everything was, everyone, all my enemies must That's die. Right, yeah. And he's never grown from that. Yeah. All that's changed is the target, and the target's bigger now. Yeah. Instead of Titans, it's now humans. Yeah. So for me, and then when he's having that scene with Armin and he's talking about like, listen, I'm an idiot. I was like, I'm at the end of it, he's a teenager. Yeah. And that doesn't absolve him of his actions because I think what he did, ultimately speaking, is a travesty. Eighty percent of the world is dead. Yeah. I don't know what I would have done in that particular scenario, but I think. Aaron's, and then we see at the end that the cycle repeats itself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. His, his, his method provided temporary peace and provided peace for his friends. For his friends. But not Eldians. And, and I think that's an, another thing as well. Aaron was always about, again, protecting his, his friends. friends. Yeah. It was never about the greater good of nope. the Eldians or like the world. It was about the people that I care about. And again, yeah. that shows Aaron's short-sightedness. And I feel like that's the ending I took away from like the anime. And you and, and and like you said, a lot of people who've read the manga have said, oh, those little nuances and details weren't shown in the manga per yeah. se. Um, so for me, it's like I I like Eren as a character, but I think he's fundamentally flawed. So when I see like, oh my god, Eren's Eren's a bad man, Eren's a genius, I'm like, he's, bro, bro, he's a child. He's a child. <laughs> yeah. He's a bad child. He's, he's a school shooter. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's literally the opposite of what Uncle Ben said. Great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. Great power, irresponsibility. Yeah, he was bro. irresponsible with his power. Yep. But at the same time as well... He felt like that's all he could do. Yeah. He felt like that's all he could do. He felt like that's all, the, all he could do. But like, did the ending when you first read it, like, kind of alter your view of Attack on Titan? Because I remember a lot of people who were disappointed with the ending was like, hey this ending kind of changed the way I viewed the series. I'm not as fond of the series as I used to be because of like how it ended. Did the ending disappoint you? Um, and if it did disappoint you, did it change the way you view the series? It, it, yes. Um, and main reason is because like one, one, one thing that I feel like is, is fundamentally important in terms of like feeling like something is like a great, great series is rewatchability. Yes. And I feel like if I get to the end of a series and it completely puts me off from rewatching it, that has a big impact in terms of how I view the series as a whole. Yes. I, I don't think that the ending has had that much of an impact in terms of rewatchability for me. But the biggest issue that I have with the ending is that Attack on Titan, one of the best things about Attack on Titan is the world building that they did and also the foreshadowing yeah. that they did from very early on. I think that was great. The the the, the creation of mystery, um, leaving all these crumbs to find out that oh, there's another world out there. Um, that sure. that um, Reina and and the, and the other guys were actually Titans from the beginning. Because when you when you find out when you rewatch it, you then pick everything up, makes you, sense. You think everything makes sense. Um, so one of the biggest things when it comes to creating a a show or a story with so much foreshadowing and so much mystery is that 
the landing has to stick. Yeah. In, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and because it didn't, the landing didn't stick like that for me. It definitely has an adverse impact in terms of how I view the series. I still think Attack on Titan is a great series. I still yeah. think it's one of the best animes to literally ever come out. If someone tells me that's the favorite anime of all time, like I hear it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not something to necessarily, I, I would debate against. Um, but for me personally, it's definitely had an effect in terms of how I view the series as a whole. But to be fair, it wasn't just the ending. I feel like even the build up towards the end, I feel like it could have been done a bit better. I feel, so? I feel like ever since the rumbling happened, um, it just, it just felt like everything was rushing to get to, to yes. the end. Um, and, I, and I know that he wanted to, like it was clear that he wanted to finish the series on 139 chapters. I thought he wanted to finish at 139 chapters because they lived for 13 years yeah. and they have nine titans. And that's for like 139. But then somebody uh, mentioned that um, because 140 means freedom in Japan. Yeah. That they never got to freedom. That's where it ended on 139 okay. chapters, which, which I think is wavy. Um, but when when you feel like you have like a um, a particular chapter number that you want to finish at rather than letting the story flow to the point that you feel yeah, like it needs to end. Yeah, it kind of holds the story. Yeah, it has an effect on the story. I think the same thing happened in Rio where that finished on chapter 700 yeah. rather than that's why they added so much towards the end. Um, but yeah, it definitely has an, had an impact, not, not greatly because I still feel like the series is absolutely yeah. amazing. But of course, even if One Piece, like One Piece is my favorite story of all time, if, if the ending of One Piece isn't good, it will have an effect on how yeah, I feel about the series for as well. Sure. Yeah. For sure. I feel like, obviously getting it, I think because I, I was an anime only for the most part of Attack on Titan, and the reason why I was, I read manga, but the reason why I specifically I waited for anime, for the anime, because I think Attack on Titan, it's anime, is just, too good. It's just it's just phenomenal. It's, yeah. like, it's one of the few. Normally, like if I really love a series, I'll go on and read the manga. But with Attack on Titan, I think Jujutsu Kaisen right now mm. are like the two series where I'm like, Do you know what? I'll wait. Oh, I'll... so you, you haven't read the manga for Jujutsu Kaisen? No, I uh, but you... I've been spoiled. I know I, I, I've been spoiled. I know Gojo versus I've been spoiled. <sighs> Jujutsu Kaisen fans are the worst fans because they keep posting spoilers and everything. Yeah, I got, I got spoiled with that as well because I don't. I didn't read. Um, I missed like fifteen chapters. Yeah. And then the people were talking about the fact that was yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah. And then obviously when when the conclusion happened, I got spoiled right away. So yeah. like, let me just catch up with the series yeah, yeah, because yeah. I might get spoiled in other things. But. Yeah. But uh, with Attack on Titan, I purposely waited. But because I was hearing a lot of the discourse about the ending being bad, I kind of prepared myself for a bad ending. Yeah. So when I got to the ending, I was like, oh, it's not that bad. It's fine. Like for me, the ending was like, I thought it was okay. Was I truly satisfied? No. Yeah. Um, I don't think I got enough closure. Yeah, but I think the conversation of Eren and Armin at the end kind of recontextualized what I thought and they about changed ending. That. <laughs> yeah, they that's changed the, that's it. The, yeah. That's the way they changed yeah. it. I don't know to what extent because I haven't watched it, and I didn't and I didn't go back to reread it. But I know, I know there's a, at least yeah. one panel that's been completely. I relieved. think the conversation of Eren and Armin basically it seems like the writers or Isayama himself. I know he had um, involvement in the ending of the actual yeah, anime yeah. as well. It's like, no, we want to hammer home that Eren's an idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we want to hammer that home that Eren's plan, while Bro, is, is short-sighted. Yeah. Like, and he's someone who runs off emotion. Like, he, his yeah. plan was completely based on emotion, which I get, which I totally get. And that's why I find, like, people who are like, oh, my God, I'm a Jaegerist and so on and so forth. I'm like, I get it. But it's, it's, it, it, that the whole rumbling isn't a means to the end. Yeah. But the whole scene, like when he had a conversation with Armin, and he, and and he said that, oh, would you be okay with uh, Mikasa moving on? Yeah. And then he breaks down. He's like, no, I never want to see another man. When I read that in the manga, I don't know how sick to my stomach I felt. <laughs> it's like, bro, like if you can't write romance, don't write romance. <laughs> Do you know what though? I didn't mind that scene. Bro. I hated it. I didn't mind that scene. The reason why I didn't mind that scene because it goes back to reinforce that again. Evan's a child. Yeah. For me, it's like. For me, I like a lot of people online hated that scene because like, oh, for for two reasons. Obviously, you hated it because Eren's like consistently been a crybaby. But some people hated it because it was like, oh my god, Eren's like a bad man now. Why is he crying? And it's like, he's never been a bad man. He's never been a bad man. He's and and that's not a disrespect to like who Eren is because Eren's done amazing things throughout the series. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like I said, Eren is a ch and Eren is a child. Even that persona he was putting in terms of like. The scene where he was cussing out um, Armin and Mikasa, calling Mikasa weak, yeah, and they yeah. call Armin weak. That was all a persona. Yeah, that is not who Eren is. The person who loves Mikasa, who loves his friend, that's who Eren is. Even we have a flashback earlier on 
where um, it's like um, Aaron, um, Connie, John, they're all Sasha, in, 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 yeah, the, in the truck. They're in all the in the truck. And yeah. then he, he's literally crying yeah. and saying, I want to be with you guys forever. Yeah. And obviously now that we know, he, he knows what he's going to do in the future. But Aaron is somebody who's an intensely emotional character yeah. to the point where sometimes his emotions can bring him to irrational thoughts. So when he started breaking down and crying in front of Armin, I said, that's the real Aaron. Yeah. The Aaron that we've seen do this rumbling, for, yeah, he's done it. Yeah. But that was a that was a facade. Yeah. That wasn't who Aaron was. But um speaking of adaptations, you mentioned One Piece. Yeah, One Piece goal. recently got um a live action adaptation. And before we get into the adaptation itself, let's go back to when it was announced that One Piece was getting a live action adaptation. Yeah. What were your thoughts when you heard that? One Piece is getting the live action adaptation. Very, 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 very concerning. Because um, f- historically, especially shonen anime or yes. manga, has not been adapted well. Yes, we haven't. We we haven't had a good um, adaptation of a shonen anime. It's, it's been tried many times, um, and it hasn't worked worked out well. Yeah. So when they um, they announced that the One Piece is getting adapted. I can't remember exactly what I felt, but I, I definitely felt concerned. I definitely felt like it's not it's not going to be good. Yeah. Um, um, event, even when Matt Owens, who's a big One Piece fan, but announced to be the showrunner, I was like, yeah, but how like how well is is this going to be done? Like like how how would you to make One Piece, um, the way that One Piece is in the manga and the anime yeah. into a good live action? But yeah, that's how I felt at the beginning. Yeah. And then let's go to like the series itself. Yeah. How did you feel as a... I'm asking two questions. Obviously, how did you feel about the series? But do you think for a... Someone who's never watched One Piece, yeah. someone who, you know, has never consumed the manga or anime, do you think this is a great, is a great advertisement for... The One Piece Netflix is a great advertisement for them to get into that anime or manga? Um, that's, that's, that's a difficult one to answer. Um, I'm going to say, I don't know. And the reason why I say I don't know is because I don't think that's its job mm. to do. Um, like, like I can't, like, for example, I don't read comics. Yeah. And I wouldn't say that Captain America um, or or any of the Avenger films or, or Winter Soldier, what so on so forth, his job is for me to watch it and then be able to be like, now I want to read the comics. Yeah. Now I want to go to original source material. Um, I think I can I can judge them as this is a good project. This is a good represent. Oh, people that have, have read the original, original source material can say this is a good representation of what Captain America, of what yeah. the Avengers meant to be, so on and so forth. So to say that, um, did it do the job in terms of being able to open people up to go and watch, to watch the anime or read the manga is I don't know because people like, People don't watch anime. Some people don't watch anime because they don't care to yeah. watch anime. Yeah, and, and I don't don't know if a good live action of an anime will make them do that. Yeah. Um. So the answer is I don't know, but I do think it is they did their job in terms of creating a live action show that's a good representation of the original source material. Um. And it's and it's a good story. Yeah. But I don't think it necessarily needs to be a thing where. It drives people to to the to the original source material, but it should be able to get people excited excited for season two. Yeah, um, and in terms of like your personal, obviously you're a big One Piece fan, and yes. in terms of your personal enjoyment of the show, what did you particularly enjoy about the show? Did you enjoy how faithful it was, or did yeah. you enjoy like the little like changes they made to certain things? Because I feel I'm someone who's like I'm a casual One Piece fan. I'm still catching up, oh, but I've you? seen yeah, yeah um, so I'm. I'm still, I haven't, I haven't got to the time skip yet. I'm probably still um, NL's Lobby. NL's so, Lobby, okay. So I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't got to me um, till like the post time yeah, skip sure, stuff. Sure, sure. But obviously like I have One Piece friends. I know what's going to happen at yeah, the end yeah, now, yeah, and yeah. I've seen clips. But I've definitely covered the East Blue multiple times and I've read the manga and what's the anime of yeah, East yeah, Blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one thing I'll say about that One Piece anime is the pacing is a bit... Yeah, it takes forever to get to things. And one thing I'll say about the live action is that it was a great. It condensed yep. a lot of the events of East Blue very well. Yeah, and it removed a lot of. Like, I want to say the fat because 
the One Piece anime is all canon, but they just stretch out scenes for a lot longer yeah. than they need to be stretched so, out. Uh, just, just like literally, I had a yeah. conversation yesterday, and we're talking about anime, and we're talking about the issue with the uh fillers in terms of yeah. in, in season in 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 original Naruto, they're like seventy two episodes of straight filler. Yeah, um, Bleach has like it's like forty seven percent episode yeah. of fillers, but I think the. I think the difference between that and One Piece, they have like they have fillers within canon episodes. Yes, and I don't think that's better. I think I think that's the way worse. That, uh, yeah, it is worse. I think the way that the root and bleach on it is better because now when you want to go back and rewatch it, skip. and you, you can skip the fillers, you can skip the filler episodes. But the um, the canon episodes are actually canon to the manga. With One Piece, like the canon after after the first, I think it's after the first fifty episodes, the canon episodes. They add so much filler into them. The stretch out scene, the repeat scenes, um, the repeat animations, so on and so forth. So yes, it doesn't have quote unquote as many filler episodes, but I'm pretty sure the amount of filler scenes it has, if it's not more, it's, it's around the same. Yeah, uh, I think it, it stops <clears throat> as we someone trying to get to One Piece. It stopped because I got into Bleach and Naruto fast because Bleach Naruto. Okay, skip, skip, skip yeah. filler. When it came to One Piece, I was like this scene is dragging or these things are dragging. And yeah. it's not the story because I'm loving, because I'm loving, for example, when we got to Alabaster, I loved everything with Crocodile with Luffy. I loved everything with Vivi. I loved the introduction of Nico Robin. Like I loved all of these things, but then with One Piece, it just became a thing of, okay, like the pacing is off. And then when manga readers start confirming, yeah, like the pacing's off, it kind of made me say, okay, like I might, so for right now, like I'm trying to collect One Piece volumes and just <sighs> read it. Yeah. Because I feel like that's the prime for me. That's the primary way to it, enjoy bro. One Piece. One thousand percent. Um, but then when it comes to the live action show, the thing I appreciate is that we got through so much content yeah. in East Blue. Like Arlon Park takes like, at least fifty episodes to get to. Yes, Arlon yeah. Park. But for, the, it ends. I think. I think it ends. Uh, no, yeah. So you're you're right because I think episode f like it ends on like episode ninety or eighty. Yeah. Something, because the East Blue ends on episode. 100, I believe. Yeah. Or am I bugging? It's on the hundreds. Cause so, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So, but we managed to cover that much content and it, and I didn't feel cheated. Yeah. The only the only thing I have, and this is, I think, just inherent to One Piece, I just think they, they did the best adaptation they could, but I just think One Piece is something that will never translate properly to live action. But this is where I think it's wrong. Mm. I think the live action done a great job. Really? Yeah, and I don't, I don't have that many complaints about it. Um, in terms of like, I feel like understanding what the core of One Piece is, which is essentially fan family going on an adventure yeah. and being free. I feel like they cover those bases pretty well. Yeah. Um, and I've, and and the most important person in One Piece is obviously Luffy, yes. played by um Inke. Uh, he was amazing. Gode. And I thought I thought it was good. I feel, I still feel like there's quite a few uh, flaws within his performances, especially um. Acting capability, I think he could be better. Yeah. But he will improve. He's a young actor, and he yeah. will improve. But I feel like they did such a great job in terms of giving me the feel of what One Piece is meant to be. In terms of, of giving me that level of mystery that One Piece gives us at the beginning, um, like giving me like, a good antagonist. I feel like Arlong was a good antagonist when show. I feel like the person that played Buggy did amazing in the show. Oh, Buggy was the yeah. highlight for me. Absolutely brilliant. I even feel like the person that played. Um, um, how can I forget his name? Uh, Cl but what what's what's his what's his pirate name? Black Cat. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Um, how, Kuro. Kuro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How can I forget? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah Kuro, I feel like um, his actual performance. He was amazing. Improved on the anime um, yeah. in terms of him as a character. I feel like Sanji's character played by um, Taz Skylar. He was amazing. Sanji was amazing. I think he, his interpretation of, of Sanji. Of Sanji is a better version of what I've grew up from watching the anime and the manga. So yeah, it's it's never gonna like the live action. I don't think live action will ever be better than the manga. But I feel like for the most part, this is as good as they could have done it. And in some areas, they improved on it. Yes, there's definitely flaws. Like in terms of we spent too much time with the Marines. Um, I feel like we could have um, like we could got a bit more from. Um, Usopp, uh, Usopp, I feel like yeah. he got kind of discarded quite a bit. But like even getting, seeing Zoro kill people, that's yeah. a massive improvement yeah. on the thing. We actually seeing catch bodies and that's like one of, big, one of the big critiques that One Piece fans had, One Piece, that there's not enough stakes and not enough people dying yeah. in the series. Um, 
But yeah, I, f- I feel like they've done a great job. And as, as far as Sean in live action goes, I think like this is by far the best. Oh, this is by far the, by the, far the best. The, the best. Um, but yeah, but back to you, also going back to the question, like, I don't think this needs to be a thing. If people don't like manga, if people don't like anime, I don't think it's a thing where this will open them to go and read and watch it. Mm. But it should get them excited for season two. And if yeah. it does that, it's done its job. One thing I will say about this series, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll address why I didn't say, why I said it doesn't translate properly. But one thing I will say about this is that the world building that they added, for example, Jinbei's mentioned... Early on. So early in this. He's mentioned early on in the manga as well. People, oh, really? people, people miss it, but he's okay. mentioned early on in the Fair. manga as well. And, um, and then even the, the, the amount of time, for example, I know Garp isn't really intru- like introduced it's, in the East Blue. Not at all. Um, and it just... One thing I, I noticed about this is that the... Um, the directors, I can't remember who the showrunner is. I'm gonna Matt, Matt Owens. Matt Owens. Yeah. You can tell there's a love and appreciation for the oh, show. Oh, he's a big One Piece fan. Because like the amount of attention to detail there yeah. was. And I feel like this is... When I say it didn't translate um, the manga well, I don't mean this was a bad TV show. As yeah, a TV yeah, yeah. show, it was fine. It was... In fact, no, it wasn't fine. It was good. It was yeah, really yeah. good. I enjoyed it. I finished it all the way through. I just think One Piece is such a colourful universe yeah. where I'm like, live action as a medium just won't capture that sure sure that that vibrance that cut like just how wacky it was and they did their best with the process yeah like even like the choice of using the prosthetics instead of cgi yeah, yeah. for a lot of characters but for me like and i guess this answers your question where it's like anime manga um, and tv are just different mediums because if somebody says they want to get into one piece i'm like read the manga or yeah. watch the anime because it's like you get the full and obviously the manga is Oda's direct interpretation of the series and anime is in like a is a more of a direct translation than TV but you get just a lot more of like the colorful and vibrant nature of what One Piece is versus the live action where the live action for me did its best but yeah. I just think for example if there's an anime I'd say that's prime for television and it's been adapted before but definitely. That's something I could easily see translated into yeah, TV. Yeah, of course. But it's weird that they got one piece right, but they but couldn't no, get yeah. that one right. Where that one is so grounded. And it's not even just the fact that it's grounded. It's like, we love shows like True Detective. Yeah. We love shows like Luther. Death Note at its core is a police procedural. Uh, and I think what the issue was with the Death Note, like, they, tried to make an, they tried to make a TV show look like an anime. Yeah. And I think what worked with One Piece is that it wasn't a like for like adaption. Yes. They kind of stepped back from, I think they looked at what the core of One Piece is. Yes. And like, okay, we need to add this, but we still need to make a TV show. Yeah. We're not making an anime, we're making a TV show. And I think that's what the um, Netflix Death Row got a bit wrong. It felt like too hard that they were trying to make another anime. Yeah. Which is, it's a completely different medium. We need to let that go. But even with Death Row, I thought like they overcomplicated it as okay. well in terms of like the way. I think definitely you could like strip it down to the core. Okay, L versus Light. Yeah. And that's what carried the majority of the series. And we've seen the dynamics. Like, for, I think of um, a TV show called Luther. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't watched it, but yeah. I think of um, characters like Alice and Luther, where it's like, okay, Luther's a detective and Alice is um, like the criminal. Obviously, they have a completely different relationship to Elwood Light, but we've seen the cat and mouse game played in TV yeah, shows often. Uh, often. And I feel like, what Death Note could have captured in its film or um, other adaptations is just like the cat and mouse game between L and Light. Of course, the, it asks wider questions of morality yeah. about, um, you know, who has the right to take a life and the ethics of the Death Note. Of course, those themes are always there. But like the main game of like, the game that L and Light are playing in terms of like, okay, I'm the criminal, you're the detective, find me is a classic, is a story as old yeah. as time. And it's a story for me that's just begging to be adapted yeah. live action where One Piece, One Piece is that one of the grand, it's the grandest adventure I've yeah. probably ever seen. It's, it's, it's a universe that's like hyper detailed, but so creative and adventurous that for me, like, I don't know how they, de- even this adaptation is a miracle within itself. I don't yeah, know yeah, how yeah. they, managed to pack in that much content into what eight episodes yeah. crazy and just capture the feeling of the universe but for me it's always going to be a, a situation where it's like i want to see all this true vision yeah explored um 
another anime I'd say is kind of like begging for like an, I wouldn't say begging, but like suitable for a live action adaptation is Code Geass. Oh, yeah, they're gonna do it wrong though. Whoever does, they're gonna, they're do, gonna it do it wrong. I feel like I feel like the reason why because we've seen because people will say, oh, what about the giant mechas? We have Pacific Rim, we have Transformers, yeah. we have and the things the, the the mechas in Code Geass. They're not the main thing of the, main, the thing. main show. We we don't need to see full on battles with with the mecha because that's not the heart of the show. No, it's, it's, it, they, they're just they're obviously going to be needed, but they're just there. They're just, it's like um watching uh, it's like watching Game of Thrones and obviously they have like the fights and, and battles and, yeah. and dragons. They're not the main feature the, of the show. They're just part of it. That's like, important. Like the loot, like like the Elevens versus the Britannians, bro. the political intrigue of that. Like, bro, that would be absolutely sensational. Yep. I think you'd have to do a movie for it, though. Yeah. You'd yeah. have to do I, a I movie. Think, I think it could easily be two, two three-part film. Yeah, I think you'd have to do a movie for it, but just seeing Code Geass, like, adapted live would be... And it's an easy story to tell. We love Hunger Games. Yeah. We love, yeah. like... We love... Revolutions. revolutions. Yeah. We love revolutions. And it'd be... Lelousie, Tactical ploys and things along those lines. Political yeah. dramas. Like, we, we love that. I feel like Code Geass is one where I'm like... This kind of the not needs to be adapted, but should be adapted. Yeah. Of course, we all, I always say this like if Berserk were an adaptation, of course it'd be it'd be tricky because once you get past like um, the Golden Age saga yeah. and you get into for example an arc like um, the Millennium Falcon, um, um, when you get to like arcs where you got like Griffith versus Ganishka. I, gets, I haven't got that far into it. Okay, but, uh, but when you once you get past like golden age, it gets really yeah, complicated yeah. to adapt. It, get, it, get, it gets really fantastical. It gets really fantastical. And I don't know how much budget you have for that, but I feel like the golden age saga for me is one of the greatest stories I've one ever read. One of the greatest stories ever I've written. ever read. Ever, like, ever. The, I, the, the whole thing between Griffith and even like little things that um that was done with the way that Griffith and and um Guts. Guts. Even even the way that they look, yes. in terms of Griffin having this very angelic, sweet little like he he looks like a mid middle aged um not not middle aged middle aged like the the setting yeah, 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 yeah. setting um prince or heroine or, or or hero like he just looks delicate, nice and like a proper commander, and for him to do what I don't want to swear for anyone. But if you don't know, then I don't know for you. If we need to do what it does, and for me, to this day, I always argue that what he did makes so much sense. I'm not saying it was right, but it makes... For, for his motivation, it makes perfect, perfect sense, sense why he did it. And it's so... But it's so despicable at the same time. For me, like, I love the fact that he brought up the imagery between Griffith and Guts because Guts... Even with the paladin, he looks like a villain. Yep. Like the shade, the, how how he's surrounded in darkness. Yep. And then even Griffin, I don't know how far you are, but he's with the, the hawk of light. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. he's he's referred to as like the messiah of not only the band of the hawk, but to like to the rest of the um, rest of the world. But, but the, the thing f- is, he kind of is. He is, but he's <laughs> ah, he is, he yes. is because because like the way that even the way that you see from the part that I got to, the way that you see is that. He's kind of making the world a better place. He is. No, he is, but he's... Okay, you'll get... I don't want to spoil it, but yeah, you'll get yeah, yeah. further on. You, you, are, you are absolutely right. Griffith is a messiah to the world, but at the same time... The things that he had to do to get there. The things he had to do to get there, but there's... There, there, there's it's all self-serving. Yeah. It's like he's not doing it for the for for the people or for the people of Midland. He's doing it to fuel his own agendas. And it's like... The reason why I love Berserk is because, like, yeah, people get put off, but people talk about the violence, and obviously the Eclipse is like... The Eclipse, for me, if the Eclipse was ever adapted into that television... They, they would have to cut down so much out of it, They'd bro. have to cut down so much, but I think it'd be the most shocking moment in television history. Yeah. Over the Red Wedding, oh, over... One... one f- th- that sacrifice... Do you know... Like, I've had this argument I mentioned before. You see, in, in um, uh, Infinity War... Yeah. When Thanos sacrifices Gamora yeah. for the ring, that is berserk. That is berserk. No, literally, because you can see, you, you see the moon, you see the moon, you see like it, Thanos in the water. water, 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 water that is stone. literally that, that, that is a berserk reference. That's a berserk reference. That's a berserk reference. And it's like if, if we ever see the eclipse in live action, it will be one of the because the relationship that Griff and everything that they had to do to get Griffiths out, 
And then for I, just, I, just, I, I was spend all day talking about it. Listen, like it's 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 it's, it's, it's from it's everything about Berserk. It's from the beginning how Guts is introduced to the Battle of the Hawk. Obviously, he, how, he's wait, a before that, even the way Guts was born, bro, bro, it's one of the braziest things. Like if you guys don't know, like this is not really a spoiler, but Guts was like his mom was pregnant and she yeah. lived in a village. I think like missionaries must have gone and, and hanged her. While she was pregnant, and he was born from a dead body. Yeah, bro, that's in, that's an then, insane stuff in your life. And, and then, and obviously, I won't get into specifics, but then what Gambino did yeah, to him, bro. And then him, okay, he from that moment onwards, he's a loner. And then he, he you know, I'll never, never forget that chapter because I was watching reading online. It was like it's a whole page. Yeah, it's a whole page. So and you see, it, and, and you see the panel of my man, yeah. and then got, I'm like, that's like, oh God, God, man. I'm like, wow. And then obviously the introduction of him in the band of the hawk, and then just him slowly learning to trust people again because yeah. the trauma he went through as a child made it so that he could never form any intimate human relationships, yeah. and the relationships he forms with not only Griffith, Casca, we're gonna get into that yeah. as well. But Casca, and then, but the rest of the Battle of the Hawk to where these men are actually family yeah. to him. But, <coughs> sorry. But then the conversation that he overhears Griffith ha having with the princess about a friend is someone that has their own goals oh, and ideas. Goals, yeah. I could never um, class them as friends. And then that motivates Guts to go on his own. But tragically, that motivates Griffith to like seek further. Yeah. For, it's just like the relationship between these characters, it's like, it's one of the most expert pieces of writing yeah. I have ever seen. And like Berserk is one of the, like I I understand, I find it hard to recommend Berserk to people. Yeah. Because one is, I recommend reading the manga over everything yeah. because the anime adaptations, even the Berserk movies, um, they did the trilogy, it misses out a lot of things. Yeah. And... But I also find it hard because of just the sub. Like Berserk is a raw show. Yeah, like, there's a lot of um, trigger warnings if if you want to. Yeah, a lot of trigger it. warnings. But it's not, for me, it's not gratuitous. For me, most of these, th I think there are a few moments like Wildland in the Golden Age. I didn't need him, but I feel like every moment of violence that happens serves to inform the characters going yeah. forward. And like, none of these moments happened, and then we forget about it. These moments happen, and they really just inform where these characters yeah. go and i just feel like the golden age are gone people I, f I feel like i say i don't say this often but that, that's forget anime forget manga forget that's just a piece of literature a yeah. piece of art a piece of story that i would never forget ever and it's, it's in my top three mangas uh, sure. all the time and uh, i remember uh, rest in peace uh, kantoro but i remember yeah. him mentioning that he loves um what's what's it called uh, Shoujo. Okay, Shoujo. Okay, Shoujo manga anime. Oh. And he, and he, no, no, sorry, J Josie, Josie. Okay, is it, is it Josie, right? I'm a bugging. Like you know, you got um, you got Shonen, Senin, Shoujo. Shoujo. Um, I know what you're talking about the, the, the different demographics. Yeah. So and any any um debated saying that uh, Berserk is not a Senin. Okay. It's, it's more like I'm sure it's a shoujo. I'm sure it's a shoujo. It's more like that because when it comes to like shonen and and seinen, when it's like like if, for people that don't know, shonen is basically um, a de demographic of young boys, while seinen is a demographic of y y young male adults. Yeah. Um, and different mangas are categorized in within different demog demographics. So like One Piece and will be shonen. Anyways. Yeah. He would argue that things like Shonen and saying that oh Shonen, I think it was Shonen, Shonen versus Shoujo. He would say that um, Shonen is mainly focused on the adventure. It's mainly focused on um, the story. Not saying that everything else is greeted, but that's like the biggest premise of a Shonen yeah. for boys is is the story. While when it comes to sh Shoujo, it's about the characters, characters and the importance and the relationship that characters have, and that is what Berserk is. Like oh. I keep telling people, I love Berserk. I don't think like the the actual story or the plot of Berserk is anything like wow, no. wow. But the characters and the relation they have with each other from Berserk and Griffiths, um, Casca in, in the little triangle that they had, even like one of the one of the best panels I ever read from Berserk is like um, fairly early on when Guts. There's like like a time skip when Guts rescues a little girl uh, from from her, her, her dad was like. A, a king that kept using, um, kept, he sacrificed his wife. Yes, and sacrificed yes, his, uh, that was in Black Swordsman. Yeah, 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 yeah. Black, yeah the Black Swordsman. And then Guts ends up killing him. Um, and then 
the little girl says, sees guts kill, kill her father. Obviously, but father's evil. She can see that, but she doesn't care. And she wilds out, saying she's going to kill him. And, and then the guts, sadness and from sadness. Guts face. But before that, Guts says that, like, grab and find me and kill me, whatever you want, innit? And then, he t- and then you see the next panel, you see his face, like, there's a tear going on his face, and he's crying because he's upset that, like, it's like... He's, try, he's trying to rescue. He's trying to rescue. He's not. He's not. He's not intentionally. He's not a bad person. But he's still looked at. Looked at as his villain. And there's nothing they can do about it. And I remember seeing that panel. It's like, oh, the, how much of of humanity and how human uh, Guts is actually is because of that panel. And Cantori is just an amazing writer, yeah. amazing drawer. It's it's just amazing for, for sure. And there's another speaking to like Guts' humanity. There's another panel that I remember was in the Golden Age arc. Is um, this is minus point it's just, there's a romance between Casca and Griff and yeah. Casca and Guts. And then I think there's a scene where they like they make love. And then Guts cries. Yeah. And then he remembers obviously the abuse he endured under Gambino. Yeah. And he cries and Casca holds on to him. And I thought the reason why like that that panel in my head stuck with me because like most mangaka won't portray their main characters. Especially in like in the sex scene, being yeah. that emotionally vulnerable, yeah. and the trauma that guts that because it's easy to view guts as like this badass that kills people, that slaughters yeah. people, and this warrior. But like he's a man who's deeply affected by his trauma, yeah. and in his most intimate moment in life, the fact the, the time where a woman family touches him, which again. Guts never wanted to be touched yeah. ever. Like, every, time, every time someone touches him, every time someone touches him, he'll he's flip like, out. Yeah. So a woman like is touching him and being intimate with him, and he breaks down and cries. Yeah. And he literally says, "Gabino, Gabino, why?" Yeah, yeah. And I was like, heartbreaking. This is heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. That berserk is just like uh, just a phenomenal um, piece of um, literature. Hundred percent. Um, before we wrap up, what's like, what are some anime or manga that you're like reading currently or you've read in recent memory that have just like had an effect on you? For me, obviously, this is like the popular take, but I love Jujutsu Kaisen right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, elite. I am loving it. I feel like I've felt, as a, I'm primarily a shonen fan, even though I love other series like yeah, yeah, Saga, yeah. so on and so forth. I felt kind of disconnected from most current shonen, so I oh, like my... They're, he- they're not good. <laughs> my heroes hit or miss for me. <laughs> Um, Doctor Stone's pretty decent. My hero feels like the definition of mid. Like yes. it's, it's not it's not a bad it's show. It's mediocre. Yeah. It's not pushing the needle forward for me. At all. Um and then Black Clover is, I've heard people say Black Clover is getting better than the manga, but the first couple episodes just didn't really do anything yeah, for me. Yeah. Jujutsu Kaisen, I was a fan of it. Season one was good, the movie was really good, but what's happening in season two? And because you're all anime only, bro, you haven't even got to the best parts. I know. Uh, people keep people keep telling me about like obviously people the manga guys were hyping up should be it should be it uh, bro, is everyone shares the same trauma from that series, bro? The ship like I think my favorite characters in Jutsu Kaisen as of right now are Utah, um, Sakuda, and then Megami. Okay. And then Gojo's there as well, but like I, I, I I'm Sakuna over Gojo. I'm so sorry, but I just, I just, I just like Sakuna, even though he's a he's a he's an absolutely dastardly villain. Yeah. But I love him. But the character that I think has shot me the most is Mahito, because the reason why Mahito and Jujutsu Kaisen like stuck with me is because a lot of the time, like I think it's very popular right now to like write three dimensional complex villains. Yeah. With these grand motives, and Mahito may have a grand motive in the manga, but as of the anime, we don't know yet. But Mahito is like pure evil for the sake of evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the reason why I find him so interesting is because of like how childlike he is. Yeah, like he's he has personality traits that are seemingly good in terms of how carefree he is. He loves a laugh. He's very aloof with things. And these are things that we'd seen in many shonen protagonists. Yeah. But the fact that this is, he he uses those traits to embody pure evil, that he enjoys, like it's not just the fact that he enjoys killing people. It's a walk in the park to him. Yeah. It's, oh my God, I killed someone. Hey, hey. that's fun. That's fun. <laughs> hey, I just killed someone. That's cool. Like it's, it, it's, it's how like dejected and disconnected he feels. I think Sakuda is someone who very much knows where they stand morally. Yeah. Like, Sakuna is someone, I'm evil, I know I'm evil, I don't care. Yeah. It's almost like Mahito doesn't even know, know he's that he's evil. evil. Yeah. It's like he doesn't even know that he's evil. Yeah. He's just existing. I feel yeah. like, that, that's the thing that trips me out about Mahito. It's like, you probably don't even 
part, there's, in the most recent episode, um, it's the episode where they killed, um, mm. yeah. Yeah. And then, oh, I can't, that got me. That got me. <laughs> and it, it was just like, it's the scene where like, um, Itadori, Yuji is shouting at Mario. like, what the hell are you? And he shouts at him back, said, you don't need to shout. Like, I, I can hear you. Oh, bro. But the thing, you see, you see, like with the anime, um, I watched the clip and it's like, they've done it poetically really well there. You need to understand, for manga, you literally, you flick the chapter and you see my many bits. Like, <laughs> yeah. that's what it was. Like, we, 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 we weren't like, we didn't see the, the, um, the thing building up like yeah. it does in an anime. You literally flip the chapter and you see my man's gone. Yeah, I think, uh, I, 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 Jujutsu Kaisen for me, it's like, it's recaptured that. Like, because like, right now I've been re watching and reading a lot of saying and um, obviously Vinland Saga I watched this year, tremendous. Have you watched Chainsaw Man? Yes, I've watched okay, Chainsaw Man. Chainsaw Man was really good. I yeah, love Chainsaw yeah. Man. I'm watch, currently watching Pluto on Netflix, which is... <laughs> I've read the Mac. <laughs> yeah, no. You're going to love it. Because I'm, 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 the funny part is I'm watching Pluto. I got into Monster and I started watching okay. Pluto recently. I learned about the same author. And I'm just seeing like, this is... This is these are two amazing series. And I've yeah, got, yeah, yeah. I'm close, Pluto's only eight episodes. So I'm going to finish that first. But then yeah. Monster, I'm taking my time with that one. And I'm going to finish He's Monster. He's a great writer. He's an amazing writer. And I've heard amazing things about 20th century. 20th century boy, yeah. Going to be the next. 20th century boys as well. So like, yeah, man. But um, yeah, Maddie, man. It's been a pleasure um, having you on the show. Thank you for having me. Now, I can't lie, time's flown by. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we yeah, definitely yeah. need to chop it up again about, 100%. about anime, manga, but even film. But um, yeah, tell the people where they can find you at. Tell the people what you got going on, man. Sure. Um, find me on Instagram, Ignorant a demo. Um, easy, easy to find. Um, yeah, just, we've got a few more episodes coming out, more content coming out. Uh, you can find me on TikTok as well. I do post reviews on there. I'm going to start posting like little games and quizzes on there as well um, around December times. But yeah, man, find me there, say hello, um, come, let's chop it up. But yeah, that's, that's where I can be. Yeah, I'm going to ask you one more question before you go. Sure. What's a song that's been stuck in your head in the past, like, week? Just any been... song, it could be, doesn't have to be current, doesn't have to be just a song that's been imprinted in your mind for, like, the past, like, in recent memory, I said, in recent memory. Do you know what? It's a Kendrick Lamar song mm. from his latest album. I can't remember the name. I can't remember the name. Um... Okay. Rich Spirit? Yeah. That's what's stuck in my head. Yeah. That's what's stuck in my head. I really love that album. It's one of my favorite Kendrick albums. Oh, really? Miss Morale? Yeah. yeah. I, think, I, I need to tell the album grow me. <sighs> Bro, I, I, I grow think this is most... Um, it's the album he's been the most open with and personal. Personal. Personal with. It's, mm. it's, 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 it's one of my favourites. I think, like, Good Kid, My City is my favourite album. Yeah, for sure. Same here. Then probably Section 80, if you can, if you can count that. But it's like, but like, I get like the other albums are technically better, but Section 80 is just up there for me. Yeah. I think it's probably this one. First. I think for me, it goes Good Kid to Pippa Butterfly. Dab in Section 80, it, I switch. I I really grew to appreciate just Dab. I think it's just because it just has so many hits. I need to, I need to go back to it because I, I, it was like my least favorite Kendrick Lamar album. For I longest. think, do you know what? Funny enough, yeah, I remember when we were talking about, um, when we came up here, we were talking about um, like when I did the Kendrick ad, um, um, J. Cole verses and then in the verses I don't know why if it was because of the speakers or whatever but when I played Loyalty I gained a new appreciation for that song okay. just, just sonically as a song but yeah. I feel like conceptually I agree like Dab's probably Dab's his weakest project in terms of like the substance of the project yeah. it's his weakest project substance wise I feel like Mr. Morale he's he's being a lot more open I feel like Good Kid Man City Kendrick went to say wanted to say hey this is Compton let me yeah. paint a picture of where I grew up in. It, and it was in a storytelling yes, bag. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Like that album, I've, like I said, I've never been to Compton. I've never been been there. I've never been to LA even. But like when I listen to that album, I get a mental picture of yeah. like Compton, of where Kendrick grew up and the people he grew up in with. Um, so yeah, and then to Pippa Butterfly was just like, I think that's an album that captured a moment in time. Yeah. Obviously, you know, that was the height of like, that was the genesis of like, the Black Lives Matter movement. Yeah. You know, uh, we had Trayvon Martin um, passed away during that period of time and they captured like the sentiment of not only just the black community in America, but I'm sure the black community around the world. Yeah. And they captured a lot of our feelings and it's, it's just a very like powerful album. I understand why sonically it doesn't work for some people. Like I, when I talk to a lot of my friends about Kendrick, they don't like that album because it's like, because of the jazz influence, because of the blues influence that they, they, they think sonically, they think, could 
the concept carries the album more than the sound, which I kind of okay. disagree with. Um, I think sonically it works well, but obviously there's certain um, like um, interludes where I think it's some new ways like ah ah love you is complicated, yeah, yeah, love, it's like, complicated. Yeah, yeah some people don't like that stuff but I personally think it just adds to like the um, album especially if you factor in context of like how people how the community was during that time period and then Dab I think Dab's is most like commercially accessible album yeah if for someone who's not into Kendrick or you don't really like abstract experimental music I'll just, um, I'll just send you to Dab and then Mr. Morale was like like you said I think it's his most transparent this is yeah. not what the community needs this is not cop about cop this is just about me yeah yeah it's just about me like what do what am i feeling what am i thinking i'm gonna lay it all yeah, go on the projects yeah. so um i think a song that's been stuck in my head yeah i don't know why this unlocked a, a cool memory but um it was um i can't remember the band's name it was but it was called dancing in the moonlight <laughs> 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 I don't know why that's that song's been stuck in my head. And another one, this is an anime opening, but I can't lie. The, the Juicy Kaisen opening special has been stuck in my head. I swear. You are my. Like, I'm someone I love anime openings anyway. Yeah, fair. But that one, and that one took a while to grow on me. But yeah. once it got stuck in my head, like. What, been... What's your favorite anime opening? Oh God, that's a tough one. First can, one that comes to mind. First one that comes to mind is probably Cowboy Bebop. Okay, fair enough. That's what what the first one that comes to mind. My favorite ending is Samurai Champloo. Uh, that that probably has my favorite um soundtrack. Soundtrack. Samurai yeah. Champloo. Rest in peace, New Jumpers. I yeah, listen, listen, peace. listen. Samurai Champloo soundtrack is phenomenal. Yeah. But that Samurai Champloo ending is my favorite ending of all time. I don't think that, like, with the openings, it can change any day. I can yeah, think yeah, of, like, yeah. Naruto, Sunday, where I can think of Bleach. But that, that Shiki no Uta ending of Samurai Champloo, chef's Just kiss. kiss. Chef's Flex. kiss, man. Masterpiece, man. But yeah, man, uh, this has been a dope episode of the Rare Podcast. Yeah, Appreciate been, man. Manny for coming through, Thank man. Thank you for having me, man. Nah, man it's, been, it's, it's, it's been a pleasure, man. Uh, make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you follow us on YouTube. Make sure you follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. We appreciate the comments on TikTok. We love the TikTok and Instagram Reels community. But yeah, man, this has been a dope episode of the Red Podcast. We are signing out. Catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Cheers.